Welcome to the Rhinestone Roper Ranch. Today we're going to talk about building a loop. When we talk about building a loop, we're talking about making the loop grow. Start out with a small trick, maybe the butterfly, hesitate right here, make it get bigger and bigger, bring it over into a wedding ring. Uh, lots of things you can do with it, but we're talking about making your loop bigger. When we make our loop bigger, usually we increase the speed which increases the centrifugal force centrifugal force on this loop makes it want to expand and it pushes this honda up towards your hand so to counteract that to keep it from making your spoke too short to spin the loop you let rope out to keep that uh, spoke the right proportion to your loop so you're spinning the loop fast enough so centrifugal force of the loop overpowers the centrifugal force on the Honda, pushes it up, you let rope out. There's two main issues in building a loop. One is controlling the slippage of your Honda, and the other is managing all the kinks you're putting in your rope. Every time you make a circle with your rope, you're putting a kink in it. You get too many kinks and your rope is tangled, and there's not much you can do at that point. You might, uh, you might get that that kink out with your with your offhand, but it's not something you want to do on a regular basis in front of an audience. I built this loop with a flat loop. This is the right size to uh, take around in a merry-go-round or start doing in and out uh, hops with my with my leg. But that's about the, the biggest loop you can build in a flat loop. Most of what we're going to be talking about is building your loop vertically so you can bring it over in a wedding ring. Once we get our vertical loop started, you're alternating between grabbing, grabbing that spoke solidly so you can put energy in the loop and then releasing it just a little bit, putting a few inches of rope out at a time. If we keep a consistent circle with our hand and we got a consistent speed, then there should be the same amount of centrifugal force on the, on your loop and you should be able to let out the same amount of rope with each spin of the rope same amount of spoke getting longer and shorter as it expands and grad gradually build your loop if you build your loop just a few inches at a time with every spin it'll take just a few spins and you'll have it out into a, a wedding ring if if on this spin your Honda only slips a little bit, on the next spin it slips this much, then you spend all your time trying to try to balance out your loop because all of a sudden your your spoke is too short and you're having to and there's a flat spot in it and you're having to make up for that short spoke by making a bigger circle with your hand. It's just a it's an unpredictable deal and it's uncomfortable. So what you really want is a loop that builds gradually. The Honda slips gradually you control it you control it by the speed you control it by making a consistent circle and you control it by having your honda weighted properly if you find you get you get you get about this big and then and then your honda just keeps sliding towards your hand you can't control it that means the the loop is overpowering your honda and your honda needs a little weight to get this vertical loop started i'm going to bring it around right here let go of the the loop right here when it comes close to close to the bottom after I have the loop going consistently then I'll start building it pick up the speed just a little bit keep the same motion with my hand grab it here let go right here grab it let go grab it let go and the reason we're grabbing it is because as your loop grows it loses energy and you have to keep that energy going even though the loop is getting bigger and you keep the energy going by by grabbing your your spoke solidly putting energy into that loop, keeping it spinning and letting just a little bit go at a time. Round, let go right there. Go, let go, let go. Now with that loop, <clears throat> I reached the biggest loop I could really spin for two reasons. One, it was vertical and it was going to be hitting the ground. And secondly, my Honda is weighted with this wire. But for a vertical loop, 
it's only weighted for that size of loop. And that's, and that's just right actually, because I spin it when it gets, when it gets this big, it's going to be hitting the ground anyway. So I need to raise it up as I raise that loop up to keep it off the ground. The angle of my arm changes. The loop will mirror whatever angle your forearm takes when you're spinning it. So if you're spinning it right here, it'll be vertical. If you're spinning it right here, it'll be horizontal. If I spin it right here, the loop is going to be diagonal. And if I come up here, it'll be a wedding ring. And that's what I want to do when I'm building, building this loop. Typically in my, in my show, I start out the show with a roping routine. I sing and, and spin these ropes. I start out with a butterfly, do a, do a few tricks, let it grow, do some leg tricks bring it bring it back up into a, a vertical loop and then spin it until it gets too big to hold right here I raise my arm up bring it diagonal keep spinning it bring it down over my body into a wedding ring that loop feels good pretty good right there but it's almost too big now for that Honda so I'm gonna raise my arm up I'm looking over here but at one point I got to bring my head close to my arm and keep pumping it <laughs> keep pumping it now this Honda will let me hesitate right here and keep this loop at the right at the same size. And I'll pick it up again. Let it out, let it out, grab it, let it out, grab it, grab it. And I grab it around the back, let it out right in front. I got to slow way down with that loop there to keep it to keep it stable because there's so much rope out to centrifugal force. But it's also a, uh, a horizontal loop. So gravity is helping pull that uh, Honda that's really too light for this rope, but gravity is helping keep that Honda down. If I slow down enough, the loop will stabilize right at the end of this loop. So we control the slippage of the Honda by having a consistent speed. And if we're gonna change speed, it's kind of gradual and a consistent circle. We, we hold on solid right up here with your spoke right here and let out a few inches, let out a few inches, let out a few inches. As I bring it over into a wedding ring, there's a uh, an iffy spot right here. When it changes from here to here, right in here, it feels weird. It's kind of scary. You don't know it. You don't know what to do. But the thing to do is you bring it up here Get it above your head, make sure you got a decent sized loop. And then instead of having your head out here looking at you, you got to bring your head in next to your hand, get your hand over your head and pump it harder. Just, you got to have confidence that you keep making that circle with your hand and keep it hard, keeping that Honda going around in a circle, then it's going to be okay. And then it's going to solidify right out here. Then you'll have a wedding ring and you'll be under control again. You can speed up your loop and let it grow or slow it down and stabilize it. Now, when we're demonstrating this, I get the loop going and then I, I make it stable and then we talk a little bit and then keep it going. You really can't do that very much because you put all kinds of kinks in your rope. This whole rope is full of kinks. So the question is, how do you control your kinks? If you have a shorter rope, you're only gonna put a few kinks in it anyway because it won't be long till you, you built it all the way out to the end and then you can bring it into a wedding ring, let it twist or twist it in your hand. The question is, how do we build this loop? Twist, make a circle, 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 which is also twist, twist, twist. How do we build that loop? Putting all these twists on our rope without it tangling. Plus, when you, you get out to the end, your rope is all twisted. You know, that's an uncomfortable feeling because there might be another trick you want to do with it. You put a little slack in that rope, those twists will kink immediately. So we got to manage our kinks. If we have a long rope, I suppose you could hold these coils in your hand if you know you're just going to build it, build it, build it, build it, and get out to the end. Most of the time we don't do that. Most of the time we do one of two things. We either plop this on the ground and leave the coils right there, or we throw it out straight. If you throw it out straight, making sure there's no loops in the rope, then as you put these twists in the rope, you're twisting with both hands. Those twists will just work their way out the end of the rope, and you'll be in good shape when you get to the end. It'll have a few twists in it, but it won't be wound tight. 
The other way to do it is leave the coils in here and just toss it on the ground. Now, as you coil, coil your rope up, you're not only taking out the twist that you put in it last time you did the trick, you're also putting one twist in with every coil, and that twist is in the opposite direction of the twist you put in it with the reverse spin. So you've actually built in some twists in the opposite direction that will give you more time to get that loop out. If you have someone who hands you your rope, or hopefully someone is not standing here waiting to hand it to you, because if someone's standing there, they have a tendency to twist that rope. Now, if I try to spin that loop or toss that rope out, it's twisted, it'll have many, many tangles in it. So wh whoever's helping you with your rope, they bring you your long rope, make sure you've laid it down properly and that they pick it up properly and that they haven't disorganized the coils. You coil your rope up, taking the twists out, putting twists in the right direction, making sure they're all kind of in order. And the way to keep them in order is this last coil. Put it there and, and they have a pigtail that hangs down underneath all the coils. If you lay this down on this surface here and this coil is underneath the rest with a little bit of pigtail laying out there, then that will tend to keep all your coils in order. So you can take that loop and plop her down right like that. Now I can spin this loop and build it. And if I don't stop in the middle and talk, if I just keep building it, there's enough counter twists in that in those coils already, and they're in order. I should be able to just build that loop and the coils will just come off of there uh, real pretty. But if you don't trust that, you can always toss it out straight. But building the big loop is only one application to build a loop. It's only one trick we do in our show most of the time. Most of the time you'll be working with a wedding ring sized rope or something smaller. But with a wedding ring rope, you know, typically you'll start out with your butterfly and do whatever you can do with the butterfly. And then you hesitate here and start building your loop. Once you're done with butterflies or whatever else you're gonna do, and you're seriously gonna build your rope into a wedding ring, you don't want these coils in your hand because this rope is gonna kink up real quick. So what I do is I focus on my rope, I just bring this, these coils back behind myself a little bit and just drop them. If I'm dealing with a wedding ring sized rope, I already have quite a bit of the rope out in the loop. Once I drop that, there's really only a chance for like one, one loop to be in there. So if I'm building, I just shake that a little bit, then all the, all the twists should go out the end of this rope. Put my one counter twist in there for that coil. Got my coils in order. All right. Building gradually all this time. Okay, I'm gonna build my loop now. So I'm gonna drop my coils behind me, grab another grab on the rope, shake out the kinks. Getting kind of big, so I'm gonna bring up diagonally. Here's where you gotta have guts, just keep pumping it, keep pumping it, get your head underneath it there. And now I can slow down. If I kept up that speed, my Honda would slip up too high make this loop properly. As you've seen, you, you can build a loop, make it a little bigger when it's out here. And once it's in a wedding ring, you can speed it up and, and, and make it grow. A very dependable way to make it grow though is in a vertical loop or just a little bit diagonal. Same on this diagonal, for some reason, the, the speed and growing the loop kind of work together and makes it a little easier to build. You can't keep it this way forever. If, if it gets too big at the diagonal, when you bring it down in the wedding ring, it's kind, of, it's kind of unstable. So you need to find out where your happy medium point is. You build it here a little bit diagonal, bring it here, and then at some point you gotta tuck your head in and, and in about the space of uh, maybe four spins, 
bring it over into the wedding room. If you're going to build a big loop, and big loops here are anyway from 45 to 100 feet, 100 feet long, a few people in the world, maybe two can spin, actually spin a 100 foot rope. I spun it, spun it at 95, but I was never able to get more than that. My friend Charlie Keyes did, did it at 114 feet a few years ago. <clears throat> If you're going to build a really big loop, that means you have a heavy brass hond on your rope and that sucker slides all over the place. A lot of guys, and I see uh, my friend Ed Cravens is one of them, when he builds his big loop, he does it in a, in a vertical loop first and then brings it all the way over. And that's the way a lot of guys do it. I think the world champion does it in a vertical loop to begin with, although it, it hits the ground a lot before he brings it over. Uh, another way to do it is to do it... Uh, do it horizontally to start with, start it in a wedding ring. But I start my big loop, and my big loop's not very big. I have other purposes for my big loop, so I don't make it big, I don't put a brass hond on it. The only time I spin a big loop is around a bunch of kids or around my horse. And either way, I like to uh, start it in a vertical loop, and it, on my horse it has to be a vertical loop. So we'll do that one more time with this rope. I'll toss these coils down uh, with that pigtail underneath it. We'll see how it works. This Honda is, uh, for a big loop Honda, it's light, but it's too heavy to do many small tricks with, so I won't waste time doing that. Give ourselves a decent size loop. Spin it vertically. All right, pumper, pumper, pumper. And start going diagonal. This diagonal loop right here, it's, it's pretty good at building the loop. Oh, look, I got kinked. Too much talking. Okay. With the bigger loop, it's easy to make this transition because you got more space in the loop. Put more energy to keep it going, keep it growing. I want to grow it right to the very end. There we go. How much I can do with it right here. All right. That is how to build a loop. As, uh, like always, press like and press share. If you have any problems or comments, feel free to text me. I'll get back to you. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.